It is Friday the 30th of August. I'm your host Brian Keir and this is the Quantum Cast. Even though we had the bank holiday Monday, we have had a really tiring week in the markets. A lot of volatility. One day the markets are up, next day they're down. For anyone with a portfolio, I'm sure you guys are feeling the pain, but we've gotten through it. Yesterday the FTSE was up 0.98%. Those who are bullish on commodities have been doing quite well. As of recent, in fact, commodities in particular like gold and silver have been rallying to recent highs. Oil has been lagging behind, but natural gas has lagged behind the most. Natural gas is down to pre-2018 lows. If we're talking about UK natural gas futures, they're trading at around 29 pence per therm with highs at around 80 pence in 2018 but an average price in 2018 of around 56 pence per therm. Now it's lowering to about 44. And if the price remains this low, it's possible that the average could be one of the lowest over the past couple of years. But anyways, today's focus stocks are Emis Group, Alba Resources, and Grafton Group. Without further ado, let's begin with Emis Group. This company is a self-proclaimed UK leader in connected healthcare services and systems, but they've mentioned that their unaudited results for the six months ended the 30th of June 2019 have been released just uh, as of a couple of minutes ago. I can see that revenue is up 7% to 79 spot 8 or 0.8 million pounds. Recurring revenue is up only about 1%, so that these are likely sourced by one-off revenue sources. Uh, the operating profit for the company, the reported profit, is down about 3%, so revenue growth doesn't necessarily mean an increase in profits. So I can only assume that the company's margins aren't doing that well. Net cash is down about 17% to £26.7 million, pounds, down from 32.3 million pounds in the corresponding period. The earnings per share figure is up by about 3% to 16.6 pence. But uh, if we're talking, say, two months, we just times this by two for the sake of a conservative measurement. The earnings per share for the company is about 33, 32 pence per share, which gives them a price to earnings ratio of around 30, which doesn't make them that cheap. Their interim dividend has increased by 10% to 15.6 pence. I don't get sometimes how companies pay almost all of their earnings as a dividend. I, I, I'd have thought if the companies had the ability to invest the money elsewhere themselves, it would be better than just paying money back to shareholders because shareholders take the money out and likely don't reinvest much. It's almost like a e e basic economic system, in fact, where you are taking money out of a nation and then there is no economic activity being created through, say, future injections of those funds because the funds have gone. And that likely results in less economic growth. Basic stuff, really. Basic economics. If anybody did a, an AS course or a GCSE course in economics, they'd probably be able to make that connection. But... Uh, Nevertheless, the company has mentioned that their full year expectations remain unchanged and they are focusing a strategic plan to provide mid to single digit revenue growth and improve margins towards 30% in the mid term. It's a relatively average business with those margins and they are towards the higher end with tech, maintaining the tech. But if we look in particular at the company's profit for the period, so after the income tax expense, they made about 10.3 million pounds. And that doesn't really look too attractive. If we're looking at the market cap of 700 million odd pounds, then you times this by two just for the sake of measurement. And we can only see a PE of something like 33 or 35, which makes the company less attractive than even mentioned before. I can try and have a look at the company's costs. The staff costs have increased 
a little bit less than the rate of revenue. I mean, two million increase in staff cost, 34.8 million pounds, but uh, a five million increase in revenue. If I look at costs of goods and services, only up 500,000 pounds, nothing special. Other operating expenses are labeled to be quite a bit, um, nothing huge from there. They've mentioned reorganization costs of about 40 grand. I wonder where the other couple of million pounds has come from. That's what worries me a little bit. They're not really that bad on depreciation of property, plant and equipment. Only 200,000 pounds increase to 2.9 million pounds of a loss. Nothing serious there either. But uh, I, I just think it's a relatively average performance for a relatively average business. If we have a look at net assets the company has about net assets of 101 million pounds that seems to give a bit of substance to the company but still they have a market cap of 704 million so i assume there is little risk priced into this company and if we look back over the past year the 52 week highs stand at around 12 pounds 62 per share the price is currently trading at 11 pounds 12 per share and the lows of the past year are at £8.53 per share. So the shares are up to the tune of about 20-30% from those lows, down about 10% from those highs, and trades at a decent uptrend. We'll probably have a look at this one later, or the chart for it. But uh, historically, these kind of charts, when they are just balled up, you have one breakdown say a profit warning or just one small adjustment to say the profit margins because maybe an external factor or even an internal factor or even a combination between the two you see them crash heavily but uh, this is more so a value stock something that one holds over a long period of time to make some returns and then divest those funds elsewhere into more value stocks Okay, now we're going to have a look at Alba Mineral Resources. This company has released a really long half year report. We're not really going to look at any of the details there with regards to their projects because this company is one of the fellas operating Brockham. And that's uh, basically part of the wheel basin, a play that uh, could capitalize off UK oil and gas discoveries. The only issue is that it has been going on for a while and we haven't really seen much progress on the front of it. So we don't really want to be talking the same stuff that many people have been hearing for a very long time. What we're more interested in is valuation and is this fairly valued? Let's see, really. Um, the company has mentioned administrative expenses had stood at around £376,000 and their operating loss before tax and therefore loss for the year before tax. Um, in fact, forget before tax, their loss for the year stood at £376,163, which is a loss per share of around 0 0.012 pence. Um, I can also see that the company has a decent amount of assets. Their investment seems to be standing strong Total non-current assets of about 8.8 .8 million with 5.4 million from investments. The company seems to be quite reliant there. One thing that worries me quite a lot is that the six months ended the 31st of May, their cash and cash equivalence figure was about 1.1 million pounds. And the six months ended the 31st of May 2020, uh, 2019, I mean, their cash and cash equivalence figure stood at 23,000 pounds meaning that at the company's current cash burn rate, it looks that they would have had to raise. I may have to quickly check and see if they have raised money since, because I wouldn't have assumed they would have survived until now. Well, look at that prediction, eh? They raised money, I think, a month odd after. In fact, they've mentioned that they raised... 500,000 pounds through the issue of 250 million new ordinary shares at a price of 0 0.2 pence per share. This was on the 4th of June. They said the placing funds were for a couple of activities. Nothing too serious here. Just mostly 
uh, resource exploration plays, which only generate value in the long term if one hits. A lot of these investments are kind of binary. If they succeed, then there's a lot of value. But if they don't succeed, then they're just another asset exploration play in wherever in the world. But Nevertheless, they've got a couple of assets. They've got Amit Sog, a graphite asset in Greenland, and they own a 90% interest in a little project over there and an option to acquire the remaining 10%. Nothing special on that front. A couple of other assets we don't really need to talk about. But I think the fact that the company had just raised 500 grand after costs, say, 450 grand remaining, with their current cash burn, they'll probably last a year or so, but to do anything significant with regards to their current assets right now, they probably need to raise further capital. I assume they're not selling their investments because they had preferred the idea of raising cash at a discount to share price, further diluting shareholders, which is never a positive sign to see. And if we look at the year's price performance, the stocks had made a 52-week high at 0.56 pence per share, and they made 52-week lows at 0.16 pence per share. They are currently trading at 0.18, and over the past five days, they've been in the range of 0 0.16 to 0.18, likely due to the spread. But um, what is quite worrying is the fact that the shares have been in a downtrend since the 31st of August. I mean, we could probably draw a chart on this, but all signs would likely point towards zero. If we extend a little bit back over the past five years, we can see that there is room for a good spike here and there. But a lot of the times these kind of spikes occur when say you have a release of a placing overhang and then you're just gonna place again. So there's nothing positive on that front. The company has a market cap of six million pounds. The fact that they're losing 300 grand at least per year isn't that positive and probably leads to us moving on from talking about this company. The only interesting thing to look at right now is that they've got net assets of 8.1 million pounds. So they're supposedly fairly valued, but they're almost a play that uh, will imminently depreciate in value. I mean, they've had an increase in their amount of debtors decrease in creditors, normal stuff really. But what frustrates me quite a bit is that the company had given a share option charge of 54 grand. If you're not making money, why are you giving share options? You shouldn't really be employing that many people for these kind of projects. You gotta wait until there's some revenue coming in and then start giving warrants and issues of shares, etc. But they have been making some money from warrants and issues of shares of other companies because as we mentioned earlier they had a couple of investments and that's probably what helped them uh, remain alive or keep the lights on as per se and finally moving on to grafton group plc or grafton grafton group plc this company has reported its half year report for the six months ended the 30th of june 2019 this company is a building materials company their revenue for the first half of 2019 stood at 1.4 billion pounds up two percent with relation to the corresponding period half one 2018 i can see that their adjusted profit before any property profit is mentioned is up around six percent and the operating profit from all operations are also up around six percent the profit before tax stands at 90.9 million pounds up i believe five percent giving them an earnings per share or a basic earnings per share in this case of 31.4 pence and we can see that this is up six percent from the corresponding period so there's a bit of growth this is probably a value stock looking at it um, i can also see that the profit before tax is up up about five percent to 88.2 million pounds so that's an important thing to look at because that is part of the statutory results the higher figure i just mentioned was with regards to their adjusted figure so that's probably an easier thing to look at 
just to kind of get an understanding of the company's profits throughout the year and not just in one half. But we're going to use the statutory results figure for our price to earnings ratio calculation first. Uh, the net debt, though, we should have a quick look, is I think has increased by a little bit. Nothing too serious. The company's return on capital employed is up something like 100 basis points, nothing huge. Uh, the dividend stands at six and a half pence per share, up about 8%. Once again, with these value stocks, they pay a lot in dividends, but I would rather say, if I was a shareholder in this company, that they had distributed the funds for investment projects elsewhere or funding acquisitions, things that can create value in the long term because these companies are almost setting themselves up for losses in the future because they are giving away most of their income. Good old Grafton has a market cap of 1.6 billion pounds. That gives them a PE ratio of around 10, maybe a nine. And looking back over the past year, the company's shares seem to have made 52 week highs at nine pound 38 point five uh, per share and 52 week lows of six pounds 26.5 that shows that the price has bounced around 10 percent off its 52 week lows and it's down something like 25 percent from the uh, highs so it is weighted towards the downside at the moment with regards to price action but if we look at the trend we can see that there has been a situation where you had lows in 2018 December at 630 pence per share lows recently at around 620 forgive me 645 so you've had higher lows but we haven't had a continuation of higher highs yet the price would have to break above nine pounds 30 odd before we could see any confirmation of say a reversal to the upside because if we look over the past five years the shares have always been in a choppy trend july 2016 four pounds 86 and uh, october 2017 the 27th in fact eight pound 21 but if we go forward to december 2018 which was the correction in the market six pound 46 per share uh, 2019 may the 10th of may in fact nine pound 08 so there's a lot of volatility in this company and i assume they're going to be quite uh, sensitive to developments in the brexit stuff that's going on i haven't been following it purely for the reason that anyone who doesn't trade off news and actually trades off statistics quant based data value whatever the actual facts instead of hypothetical things are likely to make higher average returns count me on this hold me to this it's common sense really if you if you read a piece of news that came out say a couple of days ago and you set out all your investments it's likely that that was priced in a lot of the time when people said trade war, trade war, trade war, the FTSE was up about 1% yesterday. Whether or not a recession is coming, who knows really. A lot of the times, historically, commodities have rallied pre-recession. At the moment, uh, we are seeing the beginning of that. It could be possible. I mean, investors are really balled up around these value stocks, these dividend stocks, and these would be the ones to basically vacuum the value out of the markets if say the overall market conditions were to take a u-turn but nevertheless grafton group is a fairly valued company and it probably still will remain a value stock we could have a look at the chart of this one we'll have a look at emis's chart and these guys and maybe add a bonus one on top we'll see i don't think for today but over the next couple of chart pack episodes as we've only had this one for this week we will look to hopefully include a couple of additional ideas and chart setups for popular stocks in the community. 
So that wraps up today's episode of the Quantium Cast. But if you want insight into the technical side, then keep your eyes peeled for any additional content posted later on in the day, including analysis of charts of some of the companies discussed in this podcast. But first, head on over to our site, quantiumresearch.co.uk, and download the relevant chart pack for this episode. I've been your host, Ryan Keir. Until next time.